the new district attorney in San Francisco is making new changes in response to the city's drug problem. She announced a new policy to hold the drug dealers accountable and revoking misdemeanor pleas from offenders. A San Francisco native told NTD's David Lamb that she is hopeful of the new direction from the DA. On Wednesday, San Francisco District Attorney Brooke Jenkins announced a new policy that prevents drug dealers from being referred to the city's community justice court if they're arrested with over five grams of drugs. She also revokes over 30 misdemeanor drug pleas. One native and video journalist told NTD her thoughts. What's your reaction to the SFDA's new policy to hold drug dealers more accountable? Um, I am really ecstatic. I am hopeful. I, I can't say that things will certainly change overnight in one week or a month, but I, I'm looking forward to any impact, positive impact this has on the local community and throughout the entire city. The policy may also add charging enhancements for dealing drugs within 1,000 feet of a school. The DA's office stated that the previous administration policy allowed those with over 500 grams of fentanyl to be referred to the Community Justice Court, which is an alternative to putting people in jail. Xiao said the system was previously abused. Xiao recalls what she said is one of the oddest and blatant moments regarding drug distribution that she'd ever seen in San Francisco. In recent memory, I was, again, downtown running errands. Um, obviously, downtown is a very big shopping hub for tourists and locals. And there was this one man who literally was holding in his hand um, an entire stack of powder. Xiao said he was going around offering it for free in broad daylight. Cocaine. 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 How much are you selling it for? Oh, it's free. Free? Samples? Yeah. Oh. Jenkins said since 2020, nearly 1,500 people have died of drug overdose, partly due to dealers being allowed to operate without punishment. She revoked dozens of misdemeanor open plea offers put forward by the previous administration under Chesa Boudin, who has since been recalled from office this year. The revoked plea offers included a case where one defendant had six open incidents for dealing fentanyl in the city's Tenderloin area. He was offered a single misdemeanor to settle all six cases. What I'm hoping is that the revocation of those plea deals, which should have never been issued in the first place, will make it much harder for these victims to seek out the substance you know, to, to slow down, if not eventually halt their, their journey towards death. For all the revoked pleas, the DA's office is seeking a felony charge that includes jail time. David Lamb, NTD News, California. The large auto insurance giant Geico has closed its branches in California. It's the latest private insurance company to reduce business operations in the state. An expert on corporate site selection told NTD what business reasons may be behind leaving the Golden State. The large car insurance company Geico announced the closure of all its 38 local offices in the Golden State. Locally owned branch offices were told of the company's decision in a two-minute Zoom call at the beginning of August. John Boyd, principal of the Boyd Company, told NTD that auto insurance is one of the least profitable sectors of the insurance industry. And California is a very litigious and expensive place to do business. So we view this really as a cost-cutting move. It's important to know that insurance companies do leave markets that are no longer profitable. NTD reached out to GEICO for comment. So far, the company has only responded to the California capital city-based Sacramento Bee. A GEICO spokesperson said California's GEICO customers can still buy insurance policies online and will continue to write policies for the more than 2 million customers currently insured. GEICO's website no longer lists California as an option to browse for local agents. In the near term, it'll make it more difficult for consumers that have limited internet access, as well as customers that prefer to do business one-on-one -on -one with a with a insurance agent. Uh, uh, given the size of Geico, I, I doubt they're planning to pull out of the California market in the sh in the in the near term. 
However, I would not rule that out as a possibility in the long term. Boyd says disasters can make California a risky market for insurance companies to do business. It has both man-made and natural disasters. Natural disasters like wildfires and earthquakes and flash flooding, as well as man-made man -made, uh, challenges like rampant crime and lawlessness and undocumented drivers. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway is the owner of GEICO, which reported a 53% drop in earnings for the first quarter of 2022. David Lamb, Entity News, California. California strives to be as green as possible, so much so that there have been debates about getting rid of fossil fuels by a certain year and replacing it with green energy. But one expert says we may pay more to get electricity that's branded green, something he describes as the state's clean energy dirty secrets. Jim Phelps, a California so utility expert, basics, spent 35 uh, years in the power industry in world, as an engineering contractor and utility rate states. analyst. He talked to California insider CMA Karami about greenwashing and how it's deceiving state consumers. Greenwashing in the electricity industry is where you take a dirty product, a dirty uh, energy product, and you apply a little bit of magic, sleight of hand, a little smoke and mirrors, and the consumer feels like, hey, wow, you know, I got something that's that's green, and I'm feeling good about myself, and I spent a little bit of money on this, and it was a little bit more than I thought, but it's green, it's saving the planet, and, you know, great. Uh, in In reality, you aren't getting what you think you got, you're getting dirty power. According to Phelps, renewable energy is authenticated by a certificate. One megawatt of power is accompanied by a certificate. So you have a certificate that's a standalone that goes to uh, the consumer's energy portfolio. And then because you can't run your toaster on a certificate, they buy the the energy company that's selling you this stuff, goes out and buys just brown power and they deliver that brown power under the certificate. So you buy a certificate of somebody that has solar and then you get the coal or whatever type of power you have. Exactly. And you put them together exactly and make right. it green. Exactly right. And that's allowed. That, that's, that's legal in California. There, it's, a, it's about 3% of the portfolio. Solar power is the second type of greenwashing. Phelps explained that companies will over procure or buy solar and sell it. Well, they keep the certificates. They sell off that power. Then they go into another market and they just buy brown power. It's inexpensive and they deliver that to you at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night or whenever the sun isn't shining for sure and they need the power. And then they report to the uh, regulators that uh, they've delivered so much green power. The power is sold off as unspecified power, which makes it legal. The third type of greenwashing is hydropower. Phelps says a large hydro does not have a renewable energy certificate-based tracking system. They have an instrument called environmental attributes. It's a problem because there's no tracking. Oftentimes, the consumers end up paying more, but they feel good about being green. The people in California that are engaged or involved in all of this greenwashing type activity have one thing on their mind, and that is to be as green and clean appearing as they can. And by virtue of doing that, they're charging customers or consumers to be a part of the green energy program. But with all of this gamesmanship behind the scenes and all this exporting of dirty power and well, we got clean, so aren't we green? You may be, but, but you just real. exported dirty. And so what are you doing for the environment? To address the problems in the electric industry, Phelps believes there needs to be good people in leadership roles who are balanced and understand how things work. To watch the full program, find California Insider on YouTube or Epic TV on the Epic Times website. California gas and oil workers are warning consumers across the United States about what they're calling harmful and reckless climate change and energy policies. NTD's Daniel Hall hears from a gasoline association expert on what this means for consumers. 
The Western States Petroleum Association, or WSPA, is bringing California Governor Gavin Newsom's energy policies to consumers' attention. He intends to ban the sale of all new gas-driven vehicles in the state by 2035. The organization is running ads in Florida and Texas comparing state energy policies to those in California. We pay $1.65 more for a gallon of gas than you do. Our electricity rates are twice as high as yours. Gavin Newsom is banning gas cars and shutting down California oil production. Kevin Slagle, vice president of strategic communications for the WSPA, warned that these policies will have not just a negative effect on gas vehicle drivers, but also all Californians. That phase out is going to mean higher costs for those who rely on internal combustion engine cars. It's, there are going to be fewer gas stations and it's going to be tougher to find fuels for those cars going on moving forward. And more than anything, it's just going to be more higher costs um, as our, as our uh, economy is not ready for the, the, these cars. Newsom signed an executive order to ban gas vehicles in September 2020. This was during the state's COVID lockdown state of emergency, which continues until today, allowing him to bypass both legislative and voter approval. In tandem with Newsom's plans, the California Air Resource Board published a proposal in April that would increase electric vehicle sales by 35 percent in the state by 2026. Slagle says the governor is pushing people to use electric vehicles before the technology is mature and infrastructure is developed. We shouldn't be forced into that decision right now. Infrastructure is not ready yet. And, and that's one of the points we've been trying to make to the governor is, is, look, we can reach our climate goals without having to jump all in on, on a ban or a mandate to get us there. Slagel added that he is supportive of the electric vehicle industry and would rather that the different organizations can find a way to work together to provide energy needs. We're saying slow down. Uh, let's find other ways you know, that, that, that involve all forms of energy, including fossil fuels, to get us to these climate goals. The WSPA is hoping their campaign efforts will bring awareness to other states about such policy implementation. Newsom's office deferred comment to the California Energy Commission, who said, quote, state agencies are monitoring additional electricity demand that will be required and planning now for load growth expected over the next 10 to 15 years. Daniel Hall, NTD News, California. Environmental groups won again in this week's settlement with the Federal Bureau of Land Management. The settlement requires the agency to shut down new oil and gas drilling until a fresh review of environmental harms is completed. Governor Gavin Newsom and Attorney General Rob Bonta announced on August 1st a settlement with the Federal Bureau of Land Management, or BLM. The agreement will shut down new oil and gas drilling on more than 1 million acres of public land in Central California. The settlement prohibits the federal government from leasing any of the land for drilling until it conducts more studies on the environmental impacts of fracking, the process used to extract oil and gas from rock. The dispute over federal drilling activity began in 2013. A judge ruled that the federal land agency illegally issued leases without analyzing the environmental impact of fracking. In 2020, California filed a lawsuit claiming the BLM's initial environmental review of the project failed to fully evaluate the, quote, significant and adverse impacts on the environment. The BLM has not held a lease sale in California since the 2013 court ruling. Environmental groups applauded this week's settlement announcement.